Hi, how do you write a lesson plan for tertiary education? What should that look like? And what components do you need to consider? In this video today, I'm gonna to go over exactly that. I'm gonna show you a lesson plan that I've developed for a level one, year one course in education. So I'm going to look at it in terms of healthcare professionals, healthcare professional identities, and this lesson plan is going to reflect that. Now, before I do show you that lesson plan, I just wanna cover a couple of things. First, I have a core pedagogy of play and interaction, and I'm into interactive learning, learning through doing. Although this is a traditional lecture, and it is in a lecture room, I prefer not to follow a big PowerPoint slide presentation and um, follow those kinds of less engaging modalities. So you're going to notice a couple of things that I do to increase learner engagement and their learning through specific activities that I do in this lesson plan. Let's get started. Okay, so here it is. This is an actual example of a class that I literally gave today. Um, first, I've got the details of the course up there. I'd make a note to myself, okay, I've got two hours to do this session, right? So that's what I've got to work with. Always go back to the promises that were made at the beginning of the course to people who are thinking about engaging in that course and enrolling in that course. What promises did we make? Now, at my university, we make promises in terms of the graduate profile. And we say that as a university's graduate profile are going to have these kinds of elements. We're going to promote their critical and creative thinking. Right, that's what we want. So I'm going to deploy strategies through my lesson plan that are going to promote critical and creative thinkers. Second, we want active and culturally informed citizens. Again, I'm going to deploy strategies that is going to that are going to promote that. Once I've got that in my mind, I move down to the learning outcomes. So here you can see I've created three learning outcomes. I think for a session that's two hours long, three is a very good achievable number of learning outcomes to have. And this is constructive alignment, right? We've got to figure out first what it is we want them to learn before we figure out what we're going to do to ensure that they learn it. So, I want them to be able to describe aspects of teaching and learning in healthcare, to define some key terms, and to be able to identify common elements of teachers from different healthcare professions. Right, now that I've got my learning outcomes written down and ready, I move to my session plan. Now this took me about an hour and a half to create, and I have run this session in previous years. So, you know, it's something that it took me an hour and a half to polish something existing, really. But um, it might take you a few hours if you're creating fresh material for a new course, for example. Here's the lesson plan. I made it in PowerPoint. Uh, first, I think I did it in Microsoft Word. Now, the important stuff here is in the column one, I've got my task and the timing of that task. And these are notes to myself. A, a, a session plan, it needs to have some notes that make sense to the person who is going to be running the session. And ideally, it would be great if you could write it in such a way that if you happen to be sick on the day and someone needs to take over, they can. At 9 a.m., I'm going to introduce myself and I'm going to introduce the learning outcomes. Then I'm going to ask some questions of the class. And these are the questions that I asked the class. It was important for me to know my audience so that I could cater to the specific audience. If, for example, nobody in the class identified as a teacher, and if none of them were actually studying to be a teacher, then they would not be interested in learning specific teaching strategies, they would be much more interested in the um, construct of, um, you know, learning the social critical thinking stuff around identities of teachers, rather than the strategies. 
but there were a bunch of people who are studying to be teachers. So I knew it immediately just from asking them that quick question for a show of hands, I've got this instant feedback that tells me, okay, it's worth my while to spend extra bit of time pointing out teaching strategies to them throughout the lesson. And that's what I did. Right, so 10 minutes into the session, I want to instantly, I want to just get their brains thinking, okay? I've, I've piqued their interest with some learning outcomes that they hopefully will be like, oh yeah, that's totally relevant to me and I think it might turn up in the exam, so great. And I also want to get them thinking about the topic material now. I want them engaging and I want them interacting with me, with the board, with the learning content. So we do a brainstorm. Then I ask them to work in twos and threes to discuss their memories of moments when they got an idea of what a healthcare professional is. And then we had a group discussion about that. We returned to the brainstorm that was on the board and went, ah, oh, are we missing any words here that actually came up through these stories? We need to get them on the board for a fuller picture of what a healthcare professional is. Then, uh, I asked them to engage with this Padlet. I'd created a learning Padlet and I'm going to show that to you in a moment. Here's my Padlet. Now, Padlet is a really cool virtual pin board, really, and it's super easy to just drag and drop things onto this pin board that your learners can engage with. And there's a whole bunch of uh, strategies that people have come up with for incorporating Padlets into learning resources. Here I've got the learning outcomes, key terms that I want the students to engage with. And if we cruise along, we've got different information on the different columns. And when you click on them, it goes straight to that column, right? So Padlet can be really cool. Um, but what I was a bit frustrated by is um, the sound did not work in the lecture theatre. I could not get the sound working at all. Tried not to panic and was like, okay, that's cool. I wanted to show some films, right? Like, so here's a film. If I wanted to show film in there, then you could see it, but couldn't hear it. And that is really a bit frustrating for me. Anyway, right, so that's the Padlet, and I wanted to show them a film of Grey's Anatomy in this particular example to get them to think a bit about stereotypes and cliches through television and film and how we get a sense of what a healthcare professional is through television and film as, you know, one means. So we've just talked about, you know, the students have talked about their experiences and like their personal lived experiences shaping their construct of what a um, healthcare professional is. And then we go into the Padlet and we look at the films and TV programs to get a sense of that. Then I go back to the brainstorm and say to them, are we missing anything here? Right, so they add some more onto that brainstorm. Now, the next neat trick that I actually learned from Sean Sturm a few years ago was if you're going to do a brainstorm with your learners, then it is absolutely worth taking the time to ask them to synthesize the information, right, and to embed it. And the way that you do that is you simply say to them, it doesn't matter what the topic is, you say to them, what are the top three things that must make the cut on this? So in the context of our brainstorm, which is about um, you know, the healthcare professional identity. What three traits have we got up here that are actually core to the profession that when you are sick and you are getting help from your healthcare professionals, what are those three traits that you need them to have? So they think about it and they all mull over it and then we take some votes and we vote through and give them some time to actually, you know, chew it over a bit. And then point out to the learner that actually it doesn't matter which three turned up on your list or his list or her list. What matters is that you've encouraged them to do some deeper thinking, right? So they've, they've spat out this information onto a, 
um, this onto a board, right? They've created this brainstorm. And what you are doing is getting them to engage again, now that you've got this beautiful information out there, to think a bit more deeply, weigh things up and think about the, the question in terms of this material, like what's important and what can we do without. By simply getting them to do that deeper thinking about it, you are getting them to embed the learning. That's what they're doing. It's like magic. It's like really wicked cool magic. So that's what I did. And then I've got some um, notes to myself here on discussion points that I wanted to bring up. And then I tell some stories. Oops. And then I tell some stories um, about these different types of, you know, like case studies, except that instead of a traditional healthcare professional telling a, a, a traditional case study about a patient, in this, in this situation, the cases are my friends and colleagues who are healthcare professionals, and I tell stories about them in terms of their pedagogies and the ways that they deploy those pedagogies through specific learning strategies and activities and resources. So then after I've done that, I get some more engagement from my audience, right? I want to know what they think about this. And so I'm encouraging them to, with these kinds of questions, how do these teachers differ in their approaches to teaching? How do you think that shapes their teaching identities? Great. So now we've got some really strong ideas about different approaches to teaching and learning in the healthcare professions. And the learners have got strong ideas where they've, where they've done a bunch of critical thinking and creative thinking about professional identity construction. Great. So then I conclude by taking them back to the learning outcomes and getting them to just do a little mind check through, have we learned this? Yep, cool. Do I think I could answer that? Yep, great. Nice one, lovely. And that's it. So that's my lesson plan. It is one lesson plan. It is a real lesson plan. It's not a perfect lesson plan. But I have demonstrated to you through this lesson plan the kinds of things that are useful and important, right? I've written notes to myself about how much time I think I should need for that. And I've put links in there for myself so I can click on it easily and not be flustered trying to figure out where I'm going with this. I've even written out the questions in full that I want to ask my learners to keep them on track and to keep myself on track. And I'm returning in this constructive alignment strategy to the conclusion, which is the introduction, which is the learning outcomes and have we met them. I hope you have great fun creating your own lesson plans. Cheers.